Hello friends, you're with a lonesome gamer and I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons Wrath of a Shardalon. And I'm playing the adventure number nine and my goal is to find some treasure some loot of the dragon and then I'm try to grab some and find a way out of the dungeon. Situation is, well, it's not too bad actually. I already uh, revealed a lot of tiles actually. One, two, three, four, five, six tiles. Um, but right now I'm a little bit in trouble because uh, my barbarian Wolfgar, he is now under a cage and uh, that doesn't make things easy so we have to free him somehow. This is the next challenge and there is this uh, there is this orc smasher um, attacking these two guys so my uh, my plan is now that Bruno Battlehammer runs with his small legs to the smasher and tries to kill this guy. So to do that he needs to use her hurry up because as a dwarf he's not that fast. So I'm going to place the stands now here. And uh, let me see, then he has speed 5, but a plus 2 bonus to speed. And that should be then enough to move here. So let's see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so it's right here now. And then we want to attack the Orc Smasher and uh, he has a 15, armor class 15 and I'm going to use my notched axe so I need an 8 to be successful here. Yes! Yes! That's a 20! This is just amazing! Fantastic start of the video! So this is a hit and then in addition I'm going to use my power strike. And uh, Bruno drives his notched axe deep into the flesh of his foe. Yes. So um and I'm going to do plus 1 damage. And I got two of these power strike tokens remaining. And that's enough to kill the orc because he's got a he's got two hit points. And then we're gonna pay five experience points, and I'm allowed to level up then because I rolled a natural twenty. This is fantastic. So Brunner is now a second level fighter. That's very good. So, and that means when you level up, increase your hit points by 2, your armor class by 1, your search value by 1, and select an additional fighter daily power. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, I like choosing my powers randomly, or determining them randomly. Uh, so I ended up with a precise strike here. If you miss, do not flip this card over. Plus 11 damage 2. So that will be helpful, I guess. Well, what a great start. Fantastic scene running here through the dungeon and then with all speed, with full power, swinging the axe and splitting the head of the Orc Smasher. Fantastic. So, and... Uh, then of course we'll gain a treasure 
And this is the scroll of monster control. Hmm. Let's see. The monster does not act normally. Instead, place the monster in any spa square within one tile of it. If it is adjacent to another monster, attack that, that monster. Well, that's kind of cool. We can only use this once. When choosing a monster's action. Well, that's great. That, that could be good, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. I'm also not sure if I should take it. <clears throat> I can also give it to him. Or maybe to Wolfgar. Hmm. Mm, I'm not sure actually. I mean, she is already pretty badly hit, or he. Damn, I don't know if Imeril is a is a man or a woman. So I'm actually thinking about. Yeah, I think I'll give this to Imeril. Scroll of Monster Control. Okay. So fine. <coughs> That was amazing. And then uh, we have to draw an encounter card. This is now the part that I don't like that much because we didn't explore. So let's hope it's not too bad. Well, that says Blood Fog. A mystical reddish fog brings out the inner animal in the living and the dead. Whenever a hero or a monster attacks and rolls a natural 17 or higher, the target of the attack takes one additional damage. Okay, that... Well, we'll see about that. And then we have to activate the monsters. We got the Rat Swarm. So, the Rat Swarm moves one tile toward the closest hero. So it uh, well, moves here, I assume. And then we got the human cultist. And he also moves just one tile toward the closest hero. Okay. Great turn. And now it's Wolfgar. And yeah, as I said, he's in a cage. So it's, uh, it's probably a good idea if he tries to free himself. So to open the cage you have to roll a 10 or higher. Instead of attacking he can do that. Okay, so let's let's hope for the best here. Yes! Very good. That was pretty important. Otherwise it might have been a very bad delay but uh, yeah that was cool. So hey, it's really really looking good now. Much better than before. Okay, and then we can discard the card because the cage was opened now. And then we actually can move and, uh, well, I think we simply move on here. Just like this and then explore the next tile here. And, uh, well, sadly it's again a tile with a black arrow. And then let's draw a monster card. Uh, that's a Dirgar guard. I think this guy is not good. It's an unexplored edge. Draw what? Okay. If the Dirgar guard is on a tile with no heroes and an unexplored edge, draw a dungeon, draw a dungeon tile from the bottom of the stack and place it next to the Dirgar's tile. Draw a monster card and place its figure on the tile. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, anyway, let's 
Let's start. Ah, we need that. That figure. Okay, I found him. It's this guy here. And he shows up here now. Okay, and then we draw an encounter card. Because we had a black arrow here. And that says, Thief in the Dark. You check your pack to discover one of your... Uh, one of your what? Of your prized possessions has been stolen. The active hero discards a treasure card. If the active hero has no treasure card, discard a treasure token instead. Okay, we gotta discard the boots of striding. Well, they were not that great anyway. It's kind of funny. I mean, you wear these boots and then you wear you look down and uh, they're gone. It's to be a be a really good thief actually. Okay. Uh, well, but that was okay. It wasn't that bad. So, and then we got to activate the Deergar Guard. So what exactly does that mean now? Well, first we have to draw a tile from the bottom. This one, and we got to place it next to the Deergar's guard's tile. So let's see, we got this one here. Um, well, I actually guess I'm going to play... Uh, yeah, why not? I think I might place it here. Okay. And... Well, then... Hmm. Then we got to draw another monster, I guess. Ah, oh, damn it! That's another wraith. That's really, really tough. Oh man, this is not going to be easy. So. Let's see, what does that mean now? Otherwise the Wraith moves one tile toward the closest hero. Okay, so that means the Wraith moves here. Well, we could, we could place him here, I guess. Okay. And then it's, again, Imeril. So it's probably a good idea to take care of these two creatures before we continue exploring, I guess. So, um, well, I got a speed of six here. One, two, three, four. I could move here, I guess. Yeah, I think that's what I do. I simply move here and uh, I could also move here. I guess I'm going to move here actually. Brings me a little closer. If I, if I will explore another tile here, then I might make it in one run onto the next tile maybe. We'll see about that. And then I'm going to use again my Arc Lightning which allows me to, no, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, which allows me to attack uh, both monsters. So, let's start with the Deergar guard. We need a 9 to be successful here. And that was good, that was a success, very good. Okay, pretty cool. And then, um, the Wraith. Ah, maybe it was not that clever to move on to that tile because of the Wraith here. Ah, now it's too late. Because if we kill him, we'll take a damage. I should have, should have kept that in mind. Damn. Okay, anyway, let's attack the Wraith. 
and uh, well we need an uh, an eight to be successful here yeah very good well actually I think because of this blood fog we killed the wraith yeah definitely we did that okay so the wraith is dead which is good the bad part is that we we take uh, one damage one additional damage um, I think it's time to use this braces of defense so that uh, reduces the damage from the attack by one Okay. I only have six hit points, so we really should take care of this guy. Okay, that was pretty good. And, uh, yeah, let me see. Ah, yeah, of course, treasure. So this is harrowed experience. You couldn't have come this far without learning something. This, count, this card counts as one experience point. Put it in the experience pile and discard this card when the party uses it for experience. Well, it's at least something. Not exactly great, but fine. Okay, and then we got to draw an encounter card. Dragon's Tribute. Okay. A Shadalon demands a tribute in gold from all those who take shelter under the mountain. When drawing a treasure token, draw two and discard the one with the highest value. Okay, this is not a big deal, I guess. So the blood fork is discarded. And yeah, it's now this dragon's tribute. So that was that was a good turn too, I guess. Okay, fine. Um let me see one, two, three, four, five. This is just enough. To get there with my speed so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the stance again at on the clan battle hammer shield I'm a little short of breath I assume so now it's time to move on a little slower one two three four five but I don't see a reason not to swing the axe so Again, I'm going to use my notched axe. And uh, try to kill that guard. There's always enough breath for that left. So let's see. I need a, uh, a 9, actually. Ah, no, not this time. But that doesn't really matter. I guess I'm going to use the headbutt ability. So I take one damage and that allows me to deal one damage to an adjacent monster so this guy is killed. Guess that was worth it. Gives us two experience points. So that's pretty cool. We now have quite a lot of experience points here on the side. And then we can draw an encounter card and if it's a real bad one we actually might consider cancelling that one. And that doesn't look good. That's a dart trap. A soft click of pressure plate beneath your whoops, foot precedes the volley of darts that explode from the wall. Trigger the trap during your villain phase. Attack each hero on this tile. Yeah, no. This is definitely not a good idea. That would, uh, that would apply to both heroes also to Imeril and I definitely don't want that to happen so I'm gonna cancel that card with five experience points uh, so I will pay 
this one and these two and then I still got five left I guess that was a pretty pretty good idea and then I'm uh, gonna activate these uh, other two monsters so the rat swarm comes closer and so does the human cultist okay fine I would say everything is pretty much under control for now um, So now I gotta make a decision and I'm not, not really sure what to do. I could either explore this area or that one here. For some reason, I think it's actually... Yeah. Well, I mean, the point is we gotta go back. We gotta go back to the to the uh, to the exit that's part of the of the adventure we gotta find an exit of course there is this uh, I don't know this tunnel exit or something so um, but we have to find that and if we're not lucky it will take a few turns until we do so um, in this case maybe it's not such a bad idea if, if we explore this area maybe we're lucky and uh, uh, this thing will build a loop or so the risk, of course, is then that these two monsters will come closer, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so I'll move with him, with uh, Wolfgar there. Okay, and then I'm going to explore this area here. Ah, yeah, that was bad. That's a vault. So that was definitely not that great. Okay, the good part is we don't have to draw a... We don't have to draw an encounter card there. But we have to draw a monster card. So that's Kobold Skirmisher. Okay, that guy is not so bad. Okay, here we go. Eh. Our Cobalt Skirmisher. And he shows up right in front of him. Here we are. Okay. <laughs> Looks kind of funny. I mean, I'm at least double the size of this guy, but okay. So, um, let's see now. What is it now with the vault? Um, because this is a named tile. Uh, now these encounter cards might come into play. Let's see here. Here we go. Vault, secure exit. Place a door token as shown on the tile. Only draw the respective card from this deck once the door has been opened. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, we could consider to open that door and maybe we find something valuable there but it might be also a bad idea. So let's, let's find that token first. Okay, so now here's a door marker. You can see it. Placed it here. And uh, if we are next to the door, let me see how that works actually. Just, just a minute. Okay, so if I'm standing next to a door with a hero, I can flip this card. And then there are three possibilities. The, the door might be unlocked, so I can simply enter. Um, it could be a trap, which means I would lose a life point and then I can enter. Or um, the last option is the door can be locked. And I can try to unlock a door, same as uh, disabling a trap. So uh, I simply roll a die instead of attacking, and if I roll a 10 or higher, then um, I manage to unlock that door. But to be honest, I don't think I will do this because, uh, well, I got a clear goal in this adventure, which is not um, entering this vault. 
Okay. Now what happens is that this cobalt skirmisher will be activated and uh, so he attacks with a thrown javelin. Got a plus nine. So all he needs is actually a three to be successful. That shouldn't be so hard. Yeah, I just made it. Okay, so I take another hit. <sighs> yeah, well. And then it's Imeril. And yeah, I think hmm. Well, what I could do is I could use my glyph of warding now. Place the glyph of warding marker on your tile. The first monster that moves to that tile takes one damage. Um, yeah, I, uh, I guess I might do that. I mean, I cannot attack right now anyway, so I could place that marker here. And then I'm going to move here, and I'm going to explore the next tile. So let's see what that is. Okay, so this is now the horrid chamber entrance. And that means now that we have to build the horrid chamber, and we probably have to turn this whole board now. Okay, so as you can see now, things changed a little bit. Uh, first of all, we got to read this. The heroes reveal the horrid chamber. Read. The chamber ahead appears to be one of a Shardalon's treasure wards. The rage drake within turns toward you and attacks just as you hear a great roar in the distance. Okay, so the Rage Great, uh, the Rage Drake, is actually this guy here. So, and he's he's pretty dangerous. Uh, he's this level five villain. So he's definitely a tough one. And the great roar in the distance is actually this guy here. So that is now a Charlemagne himself looking pretty amazing as you can see and he starts now here at the starting tile okay so what happens now is mm, <clears throat> we First, each player has to draw a monster card and place it here on the empty tiles of the horrid chamber. So let's see. We got to draw three monster cards. This is a gargoyle. That's not great. Moves to the closest. Okay. Okay, that's a pretty, pretty bad start actually. Okay, uh, so. Let's see, I guess I'm going to place the gargoyle here. I'll just let you take a look here. Looks pretty awesome. But he's also quite dangerous because he can do two damage and he has two hit points. Okay, and then Wolfgar, he draws... Oh man, a skeleton. That's also not exactly good. So let's see. Yeah, okay, here is one. So that's a skeleton. 
And let's place that here. And then in the end, Imeril draws Spider. Damn it. Also a tough one. All two experienced monsters, so not really lucky here. Okay. So the spider will show up here then. Okay, so fine. So, what is going to happen now is, um, if we end our hero phase next to a treasure tile, or next to a treasure token and there is no um, monster on the same tile now I'm not sure has it to be the treasure token or the hero mm, just give me a second here uh, blub 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 treasure tokens on the tile that ends his or her hero phase next to a treasure token can pick it up provided there are no monsters on the tile well I'm not absolutely sure on what tile now on the tile of the treasure token or on the tile of the hero that's a good question that's a question I cannot answer actually so uh, maybe you will give me an answer here. I, I'm gonna load this up and uh, maybe you can answer that. What what do you think? Is it about the the treasure token style or the hero style? Well, maybe both. I'm not sure. I guess in if I don't find an answer here, I'll simply play both tiles but okay whatever so you then we we are allowed to to um, to pick up this treasure token and uh, we have here three tiles that are worth just gold and one tile is a so-called treasure and if we find that treasure tile we're allowed to draw a treasure card and uh, I assume it has to be an item and uh, this is basically what we are looking for it's this special treasure item and then if we um, if we manage to find the exit and one of our heroes that carries the item managed to escape then we win the game so we only have to find that single one treasure item and one of us has to, the, the guy with the item has to escape then. That's it. Okay, so uh, yeah. I guess that's an interesting point to load it up now and uh, hope to see you for the grand finale uh, in my next video. Until then, bye. Well, actually, I decided to do at least the the villain phase um, of Imeril's turn, so I can finish this round completely. And okay, so we don't have to count. We don't have to draw an encounter card, but now we have to activate the villains. And well. Mm, I'm not sure if there is a special order in which we, which we must do it. I will start with the Rage Drake. Okay. 
So it says to the inhabitants of Firestorm Peak, the rage drake is considered tame. Okay. Um, let's see if the rage drake is adjacent to no rage drake is within one tile of a hero. No. The rage drake moves one tile toward the closest hero. Okay, so that's what happens. So the rage drake moves now. Yeah, probably here, although I'm not sure if this is what running by it. Yeah, that's Nah. Okay. So yeah, let's let's move this guy here. And Well, then it's uh, Shardalon, the Red Dragon. A Shardalon spreads destruction throughout the land around Firestorm Peak. Okay. When we did that, we we, we placed this uh, Shardalon Breathes special encounter card and shuffled it in the encounter deck. So let's see what we got to do now. If a uh, okay. So he simply moves one tile toward the hero with the most hit points. Okay. So basically that means he simply moves. Yeah, let's let's move him here. Okay. And then we gotta activate the monsters. And these are the spider, or is the spider in this case. The spider is not adjacent to a hero, and uh, so it also moves two tiles, two tiles toward the closest hero. Okay, so that means actually the spider moves one tile and then a second tile, and that means now and this is quite cool that it is killed because of this glyph of warding. First monster that moves two or is placed on this tile takes one damage. Then remove this marker. Well, that was good. So the spider is dead already. Very good start. And that means that we can draw a treasure card. And that says Moments Respite. The tunnels are quiet for now. Well, yeah, obviously they are quiet. Okay, what, what does that mean? Play immediately. Place this card face up on top of either the encounter deck or the monster deck. The next time a card would be drawn from the chosen deck, discard this card instead. Well, okay, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna place it on the monster deck, uh, on the encounter deck actually, because during the next turns, I think I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I think I'm I'm probably not going to explore. Although I could, of course. Huh. Maybe it's not a such idea, a bad idea to place it on the encounter deck. Yeah, on the monster deck actually. It's hard to say. Well, I don't know. Okay, I guess I'm gonna do that. I'm. Go I guess I'm gonna place it on the monster deck. So then I could maybe walk with Bruno during the next turn right here onto this space here, and I might explore then. So that that could be an interesting idea. One, two, three, four, five. Wait a second. I can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's just enough. Okay, so I might do that. Uh, okay, why not? So let's place it here on the monster pile. Okay. And the two experience points, they go here. So that's now the end of the turn of Imeril and then 
Um, yeah, then we're basically done and I'm going to load this up. Bye.